Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. Today I am fresh off the airplane. Well, actually, I've been home for like a day, but I am still in the Disney spiritual vibes that I have. I was at Walt Disney World, Florida in Orlando, one of my favorite places <laughs> ever. And because I'm a Disney fan, obviously, and so today, our special guest that we are going to be channeling is Annette Funicello, one of the original Mouseketeers. So I thought I'd wear my Mickey Mouse ears for just a bit, and my Mickey Mouse shirt, my Mickey Mouse earrings, and connect in with Annette Funicello. So Annette, would you please come in and join us for our conversation? That will be lovely. So if you are a Disney fan, not only this particular video you might enjoy, but you also might enjoy the Walt Disney World, the Walt Disney channeling that I have also done as well. So check that out on the video list. All right, and that come on in. And I want to make notice that she is not in a wheelchair. She's able to move freely. It looks like she had ah muscle stuff that was really her muscles were really rigid like an ms i think i probably know that about you multiple sclerosis i think or something like that she said yes yes she said it's quite it's quite painful she said it's it's it, it's very painful she says anyone that is dealing with ms will understand she says there are varying degrees she has a very soft sweet voice She's very youthful looking. She says, thank you. And she has dark hair and it's kind of got, it's wavy. It almost looks like her from like the surfer movies, you know, but she's got a nice, like a cardigan on. She's got like, actually it's like a purple or almost like a purple or a light blue, uh, like a t-shirt underneath. Um, and then a white kind of cardigan over the top and there's a button right here. And um, she smells good. I know that's a weird thing to say, isn't it? But she smells like, um, like, I get this vibe that she's the gener her to her generation. She's like the um, like the trend setter or one of the trendy um, uh, set uh, popular kind of trend things. Like she was on the a trend, and um, like nowadays it would be like there would be perfumes like celebrities and stuff have perfumes and all that kind of stuff and it almost smells like a the um pink the perfumes at pink the store the victoria's secret brand the, those those um kind of perfumes is kind of what it smells like so it feels like beachy thank you that's what i'm trying to get to thank you she says it's beachy <laughs> like it's peachy <laughs> but it's beachy <laughs> very cute <laughs> yeah it's kind of got like a uh, mango, melon, a little bit of a coke, tiny little bit of coconut or shea butter kind of scent, and it feels, it smells beachy. So did you enjoy the beach? I mean, I know you were in movies with like the beach related surfer movies and stuff like that, Disney stuff. Um, so did you like the beach? Oh yes, very much. She says, I loved the beach, loved the beach. She said, it's quite different now than it was then though. However, she says it was quite different now than it, <laughs> than it is then. However, she says, you know, it was risque for us. It was considered very risque to show too much skin. And we were just on the edge of the whole, the movement of the, um, she says like the free love or the love movement or the, like the hippie kind of a thing. She said, we were on the, we were kind of on the wholesome side of the last um, kind of push into that freedom of expression of that next generation, the up and coming generation. And she says, so in a lot of the movies, there is depicted the bad boys and the good girls and, you know, who were you really? And which part of the society did you fit into? And how did you identify yourself? And she says, things were quite simpler back then. Your contrast was just either you were this or you were this. And now the young people have so many different things to be concerned about. And she says, I don't envy them. So you have children, you have family, you have a legacy. She says, I have grandchildren. She says, I have grandchildren. She has a granddaughter. It looks like that's named after her. 
a granddaughter that's named after her. Um, and so can you explain, I don't know a lot, I know that you are a musketeer, I know, I think about you with Frankie and dancing and, you know, little like surfing kind of movies on the beach and stuff and singing a little bit, but can you talk a little bit about your career or about, um, about that? Were you a dancer, a singer, what would you, an actress, what would you consider yourself? What did you enjoy the most? She says, I was, she says, we were everything. We were everything back then. You, you had to do everything. And she says, there were very long days filming, very long days. And so you were on TV, right, as well as in the movies? Yes, she says, and film, yes. And so do you consider, were you typecast, like this sweet girl next door, because that's kind of the vibe that you have and had in Disney, like you said, wholesome is the word you used. And she says, yes, yes. And she says, but I didn't mind it. She says, so many get frustrated with Hollywood and with casting. And for me, I, I, it was a blessing to be able to, to just simply work, to do what you enjoy doing and to get paid for that. And we, we really did enjoy each other. And she's talking about Frankie that, we really did enjoy each other and a lot of the kids it was just like hanging out with our friends and i mean at time you know sure we get into disagreements and 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 that happens with anyone when you spend way <laughs> much too much time with them but i look when i look upon that part of my life i have I have a lot of, um, she says, I feel blessed to have had the opportunities, the experiences. Um, so when you were young, did you know that you were going to be famous? Did you want to be a famous actress? And she says, everyone, didn't everyone? Didn't everyone want to be in the movies, you know, to be in film, to be a movie star? Didn't everyone want that? She says, didn't everyone want that? She brings up Marilyn Monroe. She, she mentions to me Marilyn Monroe. Okay, so uh, Marilyn Monroe wasn't that much older than you, though, maybe 10 years or something. I'm not sure exactly birthday-wise kind of thing. Um, she wasn't that much older than you. Um, but I looked up. She says, I looked up to her. She was so beautiful. You know, so her hair was so white blonde and so different than, than myself. And so she was so beautiful, so just so beautiful, you know. And so you met her, yes, yes, I know Marilyn, yes. So were you friends? Um, she's not letting me feel like they were necessarily friends because they were in different, um, different genres of movies and films and things, they had different careers, but that they've met, they crossed paths, they spoke, they've spoken. Um, and it's making me feel like they met at parties, but I don't know if it's, it's not like a crazy party or anything like that, but that they met at parties. Um, I don't know if it was like a movie premieres or what it was, but um, she says, and so Annette Funicello is who we're talking to, and she says, I loved film. I always loved the movies. I always loved the movies. And so she said, I was in, you know, I could sing and dance, and I was always doing that from an early age. She said, I just thought I didn't know any different. That's just the way it was. It was just natural. Like uh, her mom was an advocate for her and it was just natural for her, for Annette to sing and dance and pretend and, you know, do all these things. I make her, I, I'm really, I'm feeling like she was put in acting classes. So I think that this wasn't just a spontaneous surprise thing. Like, oh, she's an actress. Um, she like, she got discovered at a mall or something. It feels like there were casting calls, but that she, was so prepared for stuff that it was no big deal. And she seems really mature, um, but very childlike and very fun and lighthearted and that kind of a thing. But she is telling me, she's sharing me, sharing with me, again, this is Annette Funicello. She is sharing with me that there were some, she that she did have some struggles. So we know that you had some health problems, some challenges with your health. 
um, and later on in your life. And, and that you, you, when you came into our channeling today, that you very specifically said that I don't have a wheelchair and you talked about the pain in your body and the muscles. And so the MS was something, and she says about, it looks like about 20 years, 15 to 20 years she dealt with MS and diagnosed about 15 years, I think 15 to 20, 17, 15, 17, something like that. And, but she also shows me cancer. So I'm not sure, did her mom die of cancer or did you have cancer, a cancer scare? Oh, this is, this is tricky. This is when it's tricky for me to channel with just a, like a spirit and not have like you, like the viewer, for you as a viewer, when I'm talking to you and you're, we're connecting with some, one of your loved ones, it's nice to get the feedback from you. So with her, I'm not sure because I don't know a lot about her life. But, um, so I feel cancer in the family, let's say that. And I'm not, I see her mom but her mom looks old, so I don't know if it's her grandma. Now I'm a little bit confused by that. I see somebody, there's a multiple people in the afterlife here. There's um, her, it's like her mom's mom is in the afterlife and then her mom, but I'm confused about her mom because there seems like a separation with her mom. So I don't know if her mom was sick and died earlier on or if, she actually died before her mom. I'm not, I'm not sure about the time. No, I don't think that, I don't think that's right. Um, somebody died before she did. I don't know if it was a, a her, her daughter or her mother. If there's a, there is someone that died and then there's a boy too. So she must have a son and a daughter, two sons and a, two daughters, two sons and a daughter because there's a boy too. Um, somebody died before she did. And it's either her mom or, I mean, her mom or it could be her one of her children. Um, and I feel cancer, there's cancer there. And then I feel a cancer scare. And then I feel like esophagus or not being able to talk. So I don't know if it's throat cancer or if she's trying to show me that she had a problem not being able to speak or uh, something removed from her throat that was a scare, like, is there a problem here? Is there a throat cancer thing? Is there a lump removed or something like that? I'm feeling like that. Okay. Um. I feel like also that she seems so chipper and so cheerful, you know, like, Abby, I mean, obviously you're, you're playing characters, you know, in the Disney and the Musketeers and, and in the movies, fun, you know, girl next door, kind of fun, wholesome. Um, and she's making me feel like, like not showing your belly button or something like having to wear swimsuits that were higher waisted or something. I don't know. There's something about that, like how much skin you show and that kind of thing. And I think it's a TV thing. Is it a television rule or something, something about the production stuff. And then she's showing me um, not feeling well, physically not feeling well. Um, so did you have, there's a lot of talk and a lot of awareness now about uh, mental health concerns and about child actors and actresses and about the toll that Hollywood takes on, on people, on adults and children. And that mental health is something that really needs to be tended to and cared for addressed right away early on and so i'm curious did you have some of those experiences because you're showing me you're not feeling well on set and she says that's about trying to lose weight trying to stay slim she says you had to stay there she's showing me she's very body conscious and having to stay a certain a weight and she says i wasn't very tall and i needed to make sure that my body was in proportion she says for the cameras because you have to be thinner actually she says the cameras do really quite literally do add 10 pounds they add weight to you and in order to look youthful and be young and she says um, you had to be like a string bean you had to be very thin and she said so I was very conscious of my body she, she shows me being physically sick so I don't know if she's taking like there's uh, diet stuff or she's getting making herself sick but it has to do with her weight is what it looks like and she says, 
those you know those times are not healthy for 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 girls and to me it was just normal to the rest of us it was normal and we would compare ourselves and we would you know measure ourselves to make sure that we were um, staying on on par and that is a lot of pressure a lot of pressure on on young girls and looking back on it i can see how unhealthy uh, completely unhealthy it was and un, and un, and and quite quite truly unrealistic mm -hmm. i could i can see that too i could definitely see that too and she says um, when i had my children i realized how much of a toll that those earlier years took on my on my health on my life she says on my life and she says, I lived on peanut butter and something else or something else, she's saying, but she lived on peanut butter and something else. Peanut butter. But, but peanut butter is protein, you guys, viewers now. <laughs> peanut butter is protein, so it is something you need to have. So at least I can't imagine just living on peanut butter and something else. She's like, like celery or carrot, something different, like peanut butter and celery or something. There's something else. There's something like a, a vegetable or something that is, or a fruit that's healthy. So she's saying peanut butter and something else. So she's trying to kind of be healthy or health conscious. Um, I'm almost wondering, you guys, if she had like a bulimia or anorexia because there is a little bit of a, a weight thing, but I can't tell for sure. It doesn't look like it was formally diagnosed. It looks like she was trying to control um, her body for film or for the camera for work. For work, she said, we had to, I had to stay um, fit for work. Okay. Is there any kind of a message or lesson that you would like to share um, because we have viewers that are, are watching from all over in all different walks of life. What would you like to share? She said, I would like to talk about MS and about those who are suffering from chronic disease or illness. Okay. What would you like to say about that? She says, you're not alone. I know it's so painful. I know it's so painful. And the body becomes so, such a hindrance. It becomes a barrier. She says, I know, I know. And for those who are suffering, she says, I have so much compassion for where you are. And the best that I can say is to feel the gratitude in each breath that you have and really focus on those who are around you, those that you can see and the life that you can see, observe, and through that, you are having the experience that you, you want to be here for. She says that you want to be here for. And she says, I don't, I wish I could take away the suffering and the pain that you go through. And, and I know, she says, I know that others do not understand what they do not see. They cannot understand how our, our, our bodies actually can be fighting a battle that is not visible outside, but that we, we feel inside. And it hurts so much, and it's hard to articulate that to, to, to even to our loved ones to have others understand what it feels like. And I want to say give up trying to want others to understand what you feel and simply let them help you it's it seems as though we it seems like we want to communicate how we're feeling we want others to understand how we feel how what our bodies are feeling like what it's doing to us so that we can not feel so 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 guilty or, or so bad about not doing more for ourselves when we don't have to explain that. Stop, stop wasting your energy. It causes you more suffering. Such a, such a separation between who you are and what you have to give is, is wasted. That, that, that energy is wasted on wanting people to understand. Instead, ask for what you need and 
love yourself through the pain, even the pain, the suffering inside. Love yourself during the times of the, the most suffering, the really hard days. Love yourself. Focus on the love inside of yourself. And she says, pray and ask for strength. Ask for strength. But don't explain. Because even your loved ones, even my daughter, she, they, they can't understand how we feel. And to ask them to is almost cruel. To ask them to understand. They already feel so much for us. And our loved ones and those around us feel so much for us that to try to explain, it, it doesn't help. It only hurts more. And that's a hard conversation. I know that's hard talk to, to hear. And I think it's important. I, I do think it's important, though. I, I, do, I do believe it is. To have compassion for yourself and love for yourself and to just let go of others needing to understand how you feel, strangers or family. There is really not much you, that can be done about that. And you're wasting your effort and your energy that you do have in trying to explain. Don't do that. Don't, don't let yourself fall into that, that trap. But really, really just love yourself and ask for strength. She says, those are my words. <laughs> those are wonderful words. She says, you're really doing the best you can. You can go easy on yourself. It's already more, it's already difficult enough, isn't it? It, it already is. For those who live with chronic pain, it, it's already difficult enough. You know that, don't you? You know that what I say is true. You know that, don't you? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Mm -hmm. Well, Annette, this has been such a pleasure to talk with you. Her energy is so sweet and gentle and kind. And I would use the word grace. There's a lot of graceful energy here and kindness. Grace and kindness. That's how I would describe your energy. She says, thank you. She says, thank you. And so let's end with our Mickey Mouse hat. <laughs> Fun times. Good times. Oh. She says, for the most part, you know, she says there are ups and downs for all of it, isn't there? She says there's ups and downs for all of it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so much, so much. Annette Funicello, you've been watching. Hey, guys, it's Bridget. You've been watching Above Life Channel. You know that I do weekly channeling videos so that you can connect, get inspired in your spirit, be filled up with hope so that you can be reminded to live your life because this is your life. This is your life. So live it. Thank you so much for watching.